hello friends today we'll discuss about the semiconducting materials uh, inside that first point we'll discuss about the band structure of semiconductor now we know that band structure of solid divides into three types now if we see this figure then it is observed that first type of the um, solid is insulator second one is the semiconductor and third one is the uh, conductor so what happen in case of the insulator if you see this figure then it is observed that there are two bands valence band and conduction band valence band means if the band contains the valence electron then it is nothing but the valence band now conduction band means what it is the next permitted band and which is placed exactly above the valence band that is nothing but the conduction band okay now again there one more um, definition is there that is the band gap or it is also known as a forbidden energy gap now gap between the two bands is nothing but the band gap and denoted by a letter eg okay now um, in insulator what happen uh, the band gap is more particularly uh, for diamond and glass the band gap is approximately 6 to 7 electron volt okay now second one is conductor if you see this diagram then it is observed that there is a no any gap between the two bands that is both the bands are overlap with each other therefore here eg is equal to 0 okay now all the metals are conductors uh, all the metals are conductor or good conductor of the electricity now third one is the semiconductor now semiconductor is nothing but the if the conductivity of the material lies between the insulator and conductor then it is known as a semiconductor now if we see this diagram then it is observed that semiconductor have also band gap but it is smaller compared to the insulator so particularly for the germanium and silicon and uh, the con band gap is around uh, 0.65 to 1 electron volt okay now also in semiconductor um, already i have told you in semiconductor band gap is there but that band gap is smaller compared to the insulator okay now and due to this reason the electrons can move freely and acts as a charge carrier okay now there is a pair always pair of pair of what pair of electron and hole so that there are as many negative as positive charges the semiconductor crystal as a whole neutral okay next one is a pure undoped semiconductor is known as a intrinsic semiconductor then per cubic centimeter there are about 1010 free electrons and holes at room temperature since the electrons always assume the energetically lowest state they fall back energetically or they fall back into the valence band and recombine with the holes if there is a no energy supply particularly at a certain temperature um, at a certain temperature an equilibrium is arranged between the electron elevated to the conduction band and the electrons falling back with increasing temperature the number of electrons that can leave the band gap is increased thus increasing the conductivity of the semiconductor okay since the width of the band gap represent a certain energy corresponding to a particular wavelength now next point we'll discuss charge carrier concentration now first we'll discuss about the intrinsic carrier concentration now in intrinsic semiconductor when the valence electron broke the covalent bond and jumps into the conduction band then there are two types of the charge carriers get generated first one is the free electrons and other one is the holes now the number of electrons per unit volume in the conduction band or number of holes per unit volume in the valence band is called is called as intrinsic carrier concentration so the number of electrons 
per unit volume in the conduction band called as electron carrier concentration whereas number of holes per unit volume in the valence band called as a hole carrier concentration so in intrinsic semiconductor the number of electrons generated in the conduction band is equal to the number of holes generated in the valence band hence electron carrier concentration is equal to the hole carrier concentration now mathematically we can write ni is equal to n is equal to p where this ni indicates intrinsic carrier concentration here n indicates electron carrier concentration p is nothing but hole carrier concentration now the hole concentration in the valence band we can write p is equal to nv into e raised to minus ef minus ev divided by kbt similarly the electron concentration in the conduction band we can write n is equal to nc into e raised to minus ec minus ef divided by kbt whereas kb is nothing but the boltzmann constant t indicates the absolute temperature of the intrinsic semiconductor nc represent effective density of the state in conduction band and nv here it is nv is nothing but the effective density of the states in valence band now after that after that we'll discuss about the fermi level now first we'll discuss fermi level in extrinsic semiconductor now ex in extrinsic semiconductor the number of electrons in the conduction band and number of holes in the valence band are not equal so what happen in extrinsic semiconductor number of electrons which is present in the conduction band and number of holes which is present in the valence band are not equal hence the probability of the occupation of energy levels in a conduction band and valence band are not equal therefore the fermi level for extrinsic semiconductor lies close to the conduction or valence band now first one fermi level in n type semiconductor in n type semiconductor pentavalent impurity is added now n type semiconductor means what if we add pentavalent impurity in a pure semiconductor then we get the n type semiconductor so each pentavalent impurity donates free electron next one the addition of pentavalent impurity creates large number of free electrons in the conduction band now this is the diagram if we see this diagram then it is observed that this is the valence band conduction band this one this dotted line indicates that the fermi level and this is nothing but the fermion band between the two bands at room temperature what happen the number of electrons in conduction band is greater than number of holes in a valence band room temperature uh, what happen at room temperature the number of electron present in a conduction band are more compared to the number of holes present in a valence band hence probability of occupation of energy levels by the electrons in the conduction band is greater than the probability of occupation of the energy levels by the holes in valence band so this probability of occupation of energy level is represented in terms of the fermi level therefore the fermi level in n type semiconductor lies close to the conduction band mathematically we can write fermi level for n type is ef is equal to ec minus kbt log of nc divided by nd where ef indicate fermi level ec indicate conduction band kb indicates the boltzmann constant t is nothing but the absolute temperature nc effective density of states in the conduction band and nd is nothing but the concentration of donor atom 
Now second type we'll discuss Fermi level in p-type semiconductor. Now what is meant by p-type semiconductor? When or if we add trivalent impurities in a pure semiconductor, then it is said to be a p-type semiconductor. Okay, so each trivalent impurity creates a hole in a valence band and always ready to accept an electron. So the addition of trivalent impurity creates larger number of holes in the valence band. Okay. Now this is the figure which indicates the p-type extrinsic semiconductor. Now from this figure it is observed that this Fermi level shifted towards the valence band. And what happened in case of n-type semiconductor? If we see this diagram then it is observed that this Fermi level is shifted towards the conduction band. Now at room temperature the number of holes in the valence band is greater than number of electrons in the conduction band. Similarly, at room temperature here also, number of holes in the valence band are greater than number of electrons in the conduction band. Hence, the probability of occupation of energy levels by the holes in the valence band is greater than the probability of occupation of energy levels by the electrons in the conduction band. So this probability of occupation of energy level is represented in terms of the Fermi level. So therefore the Fermi level in p-type semiconductor lies close to the valence band. So mathematically we can write the equation EF is equal to EV plus KBT log of NV divided by NA where NV indicates effective density of states in the valence band and ENA represent concentration of acceptor atom okay so after that we discuss about Fermi level in intrinsic semiconductor so the probability of occupation of energy level in valence band and conduction band is called as a Fermi level so at absolute temperature intrinsic semiconductor acts as a perfect insulator as temperature increases free electrons and holes get generated, gets generated so in intrinsic or we can say another name pure semiconductor the number of holes in a valence band is equal to the number of electrons in the conduction band hence probability of, of occupation of energy level in a conduction band and valence band are equal therefore the Fermi level for intrinsic semiconductor lies in the middle of the forbidden band. See this figure. Now here also valence band, conduction band. This is the forbidden. This is the forbidden gap between the two bands, and this dotted line indicates that is the Fermi level of the intrinsic semiconductor, and which the that Fermi level lies exactly middle of the two bands so this is about the Fermi level in intrinsic semiconductor or after that Fermi level in the middle of the forbidden band indicates equal concentration of free electrons and holes now this Fermi level at the middle of the uh, two bands indicates that um, the there is a equal concentration of free electrons and holes means um, number of electrons present in a conduction band are same as like as number of holes present in a valence band. So the whole concentration in valence band is P is equal to NV into E raised to minus EF minus EV divided by KBT. Similarly, the electron concentration in conduction band we can write N is equal to NC into E raised to minus EC minus EF divided by KBT. So for an intrinsic semiconductor, the electron carrier concentration is equal to the whole carrier concentration. That is we can write P is equal to N is equal to NI. Here P indicates whole carrier concentration, N indicate electron carrier concentration and this NI 
represent intrinsic carrier concentration so fermi level for intrinsic semiconductor we can write ef is equal to ec plus ev divided by 2 and therefore for fermi level in an intrinsic semiconductor lies in the middle of the forbidden gap thank you